strong pro programs. Key point in the last four years under Tony Gata has been 70 and 34. Meanwhile, on the other side, Bob Kahn is 82 and 51 in his six years. Shot is up and no good. Hadke follows, and she's going to go back to the foul line. Could be Roxanne Dankovic again. Keyport's starting to get into foul uh, trouble now. They're, they're coming a little more rapidly with the fouls than they were earlier. Whistles are starting to blow. Hadke for two more for the line. First is good. New Providence finished second in the Mountain Valley Conference's Mountain Division to Ridge High School. They were also in the semifinals of the county tournament before losing to Union Catholic. Steal underneath. New Providence with the basketball off the miss. Janice Higgins from the baseline, no good. Hadke stretches out for the rebound. She uh -oh. is blocked from behind, and a foul is called on Ronnie Dumas. Hadke is now starting to assert herself uh, more. Uh, she's, she's, she was asserting herself plenty, but now uh, a little more, and she's banging those boards pretty good. Tony Gator not too happy. Hadke making a living from the free throw line. She's back there one more time. That's Ronnie Dumas' second personal foul. Five team fouls now. Caitlin Hadke with a nice touch from the free throw line. Yeah, you put her up there and she makes them. New Providence up by five one more time. Hadke stretches that lead to a half a dozen. 33 to 27. And the press stays on. They keep pressing. They break it ahead to Malika. Malika two on two with Ronnie Dumas. Malika goes down the lane, looks for the pass, and then brings the ball outside to Dankovic. Roxanne Dankovic hounded by Janice Higgins. There's the play they want with the basketball. Colleen Brady, her shot is up, won't go home. Hadke with the rebound. Hadke to Campana. New Providence on the attack. Janice Higgins immediately puts it up, no good. Who's right there? Caitlin Hadke, her shot is no good, and we're going to have a jump ball. Caitlin Hadke will jump with she Cynthia seems. Dumas. She seems to be around the ball all the time, Jim. Ball is in the air, and we have a whistle. Violation called against Keyport. New Providence will take over the basketball. Lisa Howard will inbound. Howard to Campana. 4.30 to go in the third quarter. New Providence getting good ball movement. Higgins down low to Hadke, no good, but right there for the follow is Linda Burke. Failure to box out that time. Colleen Brady was right there, didn't box out Linda Burke, and she went up. They had three shots again off the board. 35-27, biggest lead of the ball game now. Eight points for the Lady Pioneers. Malika thinks about the shot and won't take it. Dankovic drives the lane, puts it up with the left hand, no good. But Dankovic comes out with the rebound, puts it up again, no good. Oh, rolls back home for her. No, she got the roll that time. Looks like it was going to jump out, uh, Jim, but down she went. Dankovic now in double figures with 10. 35-29. The keyboard fans exhorting on the Lady Red Raiders. But they get it inside again to Hadke. This time the shot's no good, but a foul by Higgins is fouled. They are really uh, dominating them on the offensive board now. Uh, just doesn't seem that uh, Keyport can come off the boards with the ball at all. I guess that's something you have to expect uh, coming in when you play the three guards and your right. two front line players are 5'9", five, 5'8", five, and... Uh, that forces Colleen Brady at 5'6 to try and battle on the boards so of players three or four inches taller than she is. And it's taken its toll. Janice Higgins at the line. Higgins first is good. Both Janice Higgins and uh, Gaitlin Hatke, both are, when you put them on the line, they're excellent shooters up there. They'll hurt you. 
Higgins comes in with that 17.5 per game average, and she shoots 65% from the free throw line. The lead is back to eight, 37-29. Twelve points now for Janice Higgins. Brady nice finds pass. underneath Ronnie Dumas for an easy two. Ronnie Dumas now with nine points. 37-31, 305 to go in the third quarter. Underneath to Hadke. Hadke gets the two. This looks like a rerun of their offense every time down the floor. They throw it to the high post, turn around, throw it to the low post. Hadke gets the ball and either scores or gets fouled. Hadke now with 18 points. 10 points here in the third quarter for Caitlin Hadke, just a junior. Dankovich underneath finds Ronnie Dumas, whose first is not good, but the second goes in. Good second effort by Ronnie Dumas that time, and uh, that's the first time they've gotten a second shot down there, I believe. She now has 11 points, 39-33. Higgins at the foul line, tries to work for some open room. New Providence being patient now. They can afford to be. Campana forces it down low. This time, the pass does not go to its target, and a foul is called. We'll see Hadke one more time, trying to work underneath. Look at her down there, looking for the ball. That's what they've been doing time after time. Same play. She goes up that time. She wasn't fouled. She made the field goal instead. Janice Higgins picks up that foul, just her first in the ballgame. Third team foul called on New Providence. Is that full court press uh, that New Providence has employed the whole ball game? Get it into Colleen Brady. Brady behind her back once, spins, works it back outside. Guarded by Janice Higgins. Higgins now picks up Roxanne Dankovich. Down low to Brady on the baseline to Malika for an easy bank. I'll say one thing for the Brady girl. Uh, she's a complete basketball player. She is uh, very unselfish and gives the ball up. 39-35, key port inches back. They trail by four, 158 to go. The Providence always seems to be on the verge of uh, putting it away, and then uh, somehow the Red Raiders sneak back in. Campana between the circles now. Right side, Halleck. Burke throwing it high for Hadke, picked up by Ronnie Dumas, but Ronnie Dumas steps on the baseline. And a timeout called by Bob Kahn. He'll bring his troops back over to the New Providence bench with 1.26 to go in quarter number three. Flicker Sports Review coming up on TV3 Friday night, March 25th at 9.30, Pat Delsey with exciting news from all sports at Rutgers University. Scarlet Knights men's and women's programs are featured. So tune in to Rutgers Sports Review Friday night at 9.30 on TV3. Also coming up, some more exciting action right from this floor. We'll be having the girls and boys all-star classic. You get an opportunity to see many of the top players in the state and certainly also a large number of players that normally throughout the year you won't get a good chance to see. Well, here's your opportunity. Thursday evening at 7.30, Saturday at 7, and Sunday at 2, the Boys and Girls All-Star Classic right here on TV3. Bob Kahn, assisted by Skip Lynn at the New Providence bench. 22-6 and six their mark coming in. They lost to Union Catholic in the Union County Tournament, but they lost to some very good teams. They lost to Immaculata from Somerset County. Immaculata went on to play in the North Parochial Championship. They also lost to Ridge twice, and Ridge was the Somerset County champion, so some very strong ball clubs and really not any uh, black marks on the New Providence loss schedule there. New Providence is a very... Uh, <laughs> look at the little toddler. Think she's enjoying it, Jim? I think so. <laughs> not really sure if they decided yet who to cheer for, but... <laughs> I wasn't sure whether it was a he or a she. No. Oh. 120 to go. And the crowd really starting to pick up a little bit here from the Rikers Athletic Center. Linda Burke thinks about driving, throws it back outside of Lisa Halleck. 
Halleck, right side. They worked the ball into the corner to Higgins. Keyport trying to pack that zone in. They get it inside to Burke. The basket will not count, and traveling is called. Caitlin Hadke doesn't like it, and neither does Linda Burke. They both have something to say, but it looked from here like a good call, Eddie. I thought it was. Uh, both her and Caitlin Hadke, uh, they kind of get themselves ready when they're, they're going to do it, and they, they, they do walk a little bit. Jim Loper and Donna Martello are officials. 39-35, yeah. we have 44 seconds to go in the third quarter. Dankovich tries to find Ronnie Dumas, throws it away. Saved back bow by Marianne Malika. Nice play by Marianne Malika that time. Uh, keeps Keyport in possession of the basketball with 32, 31 seconds to go. Dankovic, and now we'll see if the Lady Red Raiders look for the final shot. They don't, though, because Brady had a good opportunity. It won't go home. It's the first time they were able to bounce the ball into it there in a post position. She came up with a left-hand scoop shot. 15 seconds, and now the Pioneers will look for one good opportunity here in the third quarter. Time running down inside of 10 seconds. They get it to Burke, whose shot is up and good. Linda Burke with a field goal. Four seconds left. Brady from 22 feet, no good. So the third quarter ends, and we're pretty much in the same position we were at halftime. A six-point lead for the Lady Pioneers of New Providence. We have one exciting quarter of, of high school basketball left for the Girls Group 1 Championship. Eddie and I will be right back with that action with the score. New Providence 41, Keyport 35. You're right. Cynthia Dumas and Caitlin Hadke get ready to jump it up. Eight minutes of basketball left. The decision still up in the air. Eddie, there's our score by quarters, and uh, New Providence playing well in the beginning, but uh, by the end of the quarter, Keyport's always back. Keeps hanging in. That's the first time Keyport has gotten one of the taps and gained possession of the ball at the beginning of a quarter uh, in this ball game. Cynthia Dumas had time to set up, and she didn't miss. Six points in the ball game for Cynthia Dumas. 7.34 to go in the ball game. Four-point lead for the Lady Pioneers. They try and force it on the wing, almost stolen away by Ronnie Dumas, and now stepping on the baseline and turning it over. Janice Higgins. So the turnovers continue to mount for New Providence. Most all of their turnovers are coming when they're looking for shots, going towards the bucket down under. Malika off the glass. This time it won't go home for her. Caitlin Hadke with the quick rebound in the outlet. It's going to be four on two. Campana with the basketball left side. Halleck loses control. It's on the floor, and we're going to have a jump ball. Janice Higgins will be jumping with Roxanne Dankovic. I don't think New Providence wants to get into a run-and-shoot game with Keyport. Uh, New Providence likes to come down and set up. That time they were running. Set up where they can use the advantage of uh, Janice Higgins and Gaitlin Hatke, uh, the height advantage they have. Also, Lisa Burke in there. Marianne Malika leaves the lineup. Maxine Whitlock, a 5'4 sophomore, comes into the ball game. Maxine averaging a field goal per ball game. I believe that might be the first sub for Keyport. I believe you're right. 
Malika and Whitlock had been alternating earlier in the year, but uh, Tony Gator decided to go with Marianne Malika, a freshman pretty much throughout the ball game. 7.05 to go. New Providence with the tap and Hadkey with the turnaround. No good. Rebound comes off to Ronnie Dumas. To Cynthia and now to Roxanne Dankovic. Dankovic loops the pass down low. Ronnie Dumas good in a foul. Beautiful pass. And they're starting to go to Dumas underneath now. And she's coming through. And this could be a three-point play. Cut the lead to one. Look at that key point. Here's the replay. There's a lob pass. She goes up. Dumas girl is hit just on her left hand as she goes up, and here she is at the line for what could be the completion of a three-point play, and it is. So Ronnie Dumas now with 14 points, and she's been a star in her own right this evening. 41 to 40, New Providence just with that one-point lead. Key point now as close as they have been since the first quarter, and a jump ball. Eddie, those turnovers may finally be uh, starting Catching to catch up. up with New Providence. You're right, Jim. They are turning the ball over. They're trying to force it, you know, down under, and uh, Keyport is clogged back in, and uh, they're now starting to get some interceptions on that direct pass into Gaitlin Hatchie. Well, Tony Gator had a few words to say, and Marianne Malika quickly checks back into the lineup for Maxine Whitlock. Tip is controlled by New Providence, and they have a break underneath. Hadke is open, and she's going to be tied up. They're going after her. She thought she was fouled. They're going after her with the double team, too. She went and spoke to Jim Loper. She wasn't afraid to tell Jim Loper exactly what she felt right there. She'll be jumping listen, again with Cynthia Dumas. Listen, Mr. Loper, they're hitting me. <laughs> I think they were, too. Tap controlled to Mary Beth Campana. Campana spins right, holds. 6.27 to go, one-point lead. Air ball on a jump shot. Burke and Higgins go to save the basketball, but it goes to Keyport, and they have a first chance for a lead since the early portions of the game. I don't think they ever had a lead in the ball game, Eddie. I don't think so. This would be their first one, and they get it to Colleen Brady. 41 to 40, Brady brings it across. Double teamed. Gets it to Dankovic, down low. Cynthia Dumas, no good. Rebound comes down to Linda Burke. Burke to Campana. Campana raises it up the right sideline, holds. New Providence being tested here in the fourth quarter. They're going to earn this Group 1 championship if they can hold on as Keyport is making a run. Halleck will do the inbounds. And as you've said so many times, Jim, the turnovers have put Keyport back in the ball game. New Providence's turnovers. They bounce it low for Burke, and she gets the easy two. Linda Burke has had a strong game at both ends of the floor. She now has 10 points. 43 to 40. In the lane, Colleen Brady hits. Nice move. Brady now with eight points. 43-42, and we have a whistle. Jim Lobar, I believe, has a foul call underneath. I think there might be an injury once want somebody to take a look at Donna Campana. She may have gotten elbowed on the top of the head or in the face. Um, this break is going to cause a couple of substitutions. Campana may be leaving the lineup. We'll wait and see, but Maxine Whitlock checks back in. This time, Roxanne Dankovich is going to sit down. Bob Kahn is going to make a change along his bench, and you see him there talking to Mary Beth Campana, making sure she's okay. I think they're just going to put her right back in. Halleck will work now with Kim Rogers. Rogers with the basketball. 5.32 to go. Baseline into Hadke, and she goes to put it up with a whistle. This time a foul is called. I'll tell you, she's kind of the outlet pass. When, the, when they're in trouble, they try to just lob it into her, and they've been successful doing it. Roxanne Dankovich returns immediately. Caitlin had to keep her two more shots at the free throw line. Her personal foul was on Cynthia Dumas, and that was her fourth personal foul. Caitlin Hadke now with 19 in the ballgame. Going for the big 2-0. 
She had 10 in the first half. She now, gets it. 10 more in the second half so far. Ahead of her 15.5 per game average, Caitlin Hadke with 20. Three-point lead for New Providence, 45 to 42. New Providence took the press off that time for the first time. Brady from 10 feet is good. Brady now with double figures for the first time. She has 10 points. We had uh, Janice Higgins on her that time and said twice now. She went right around Higgins that time, got the shot up. Looping pass down low, stolen away by Brady. Brady throwing the outlet ahead for Cynthia Dumas. Dumas, check that, Ronnie Dumas not really looking close to Hadke. Hadke has it knocked away by Marianne Malika. It'll remain New Providence possession. Ronnie Dumas uh, knew that she was out, that the other girl was open up ahead, and she just, as soon as the ball came to her, she tried to throw it. Hadke made a good play, stayed between, and got the interception. Halleck tries to force Stankovic, though, with the steal. Brady thinks about throwing it ahead this time, decides to dribble it herself. Don't be surprised, she goes all the way. This time she dishes off to Ronnie Dumas, and Ronnie Dumas is hit. fouled. Foul be on Linda Burke. Both teams in the one-on-one -on -one now. Second personal foul called on Linda Burke, and we're going to have a timeout. 4.33 to go in the ball game. Just a one-point lead for New Providence, 45-44. to 44. Bob Kahn now has to go over and tell his team we've been in front all night, but don't be surprised if this keyboard team turns up on top in just a few seconds. Well, as you say, uh, finally caught up with them. They've, they've turned the ball over an awful lot. Of course, they've gained a lot by what they're doing. Most of their turnovers had come trying to force the ball down under to either Gaitlin Hadkey or, or to uh, Linda Burke or to uh, Lisa Higgins. They're trying to force the ball inside, and the uh, Keyport has taken the ball uh, on steals quite a bit, and especially in the fourth quarter here. And just can't keep turning the ball back when you have a six, eight point lead. The first berth in the state championship final round for both of these schools. New Providence made the state tournament the last couple of years, but they were knocked off in first round action. And this is obviously the farthest once again any Keyport team has made it. Last year they made it to the Central Jersey semifinal round before losing to St. Peter's of New Brunswick. We'll see if there's any change in strategy here. Now, I noticed the last time when they had a three-point lead, uh, New Providence took the uh, full-court press off and went back into just that uh, half-court defense that they've been using on Colleen Brady. See if they change around a little bit. We won't be able to tell the last of the foul shots. And see what the outcome is here. Ronnie Dumas at the line. Good free throw percentage of 71%. It goes. And we have a tie game. Tie ball game for the first time since the opening gun. And you know, Eddie, Cynthia Dumas and Colleen Brady come in with over 1,000 points each, but it's been Ronnie Dumas who's really uh, carried the payload this afternoon. First time tonight, the key port Red Raiders are out in front. 46-45 in favor of the Red Raiders. New Providence now will have to work to regain the lead for the first time. Halleck between the circles to Linda Burke. Burke finds an opening, drives and shoots and scores. Lead didn't stay too long. New Providence came right back. Now New Providence is going back. No press. I'm trying to see. Looks like they could almost be in a man-to-man. -man. I believe you're correct. That's what they're going through right now. Dankovich between the circles, spins, sees Ronnie Dumas. Check that, Cynthia Dumas. The shot is in and out. Rebound comes down to Janice Higgins. Higgins with the basketball to Mary Beth Campana. 3.45 to go. 47-46 in favor of New Providence. This is a big sequence right here. New Providence comes up with a field goal. They may force Keyport to uh, change their defense. And Higgins can't get the shot to go, but we're going to have a foul. The keyboard players are clapping, so obviously the personal is going to be called against New Providence. Could be Caitlin Hadke. I think it was uh, Linda Burke. We're going to have a substitution. Maxine Whitlock will come in from Ariane Malika. Colleen Brady will go to the line. The personal foul was called on Caitlin Hadke. That's her second. 
Brady at the line for a one and one. First time today. Nice touch by Colleen Brady. She has 11 points. Brady shoots 54% from the field and 66% from the free throw line. Not too shabby. Puts it out in front. Second time. Keyport has had a lead now at 48 to 47. 326 left. Seems to be more keyboard fans here. They have the defense cheer up right now. Burke tries to force it, knocked away by Whitlock, stolen away by Maxine Whitlock. There's that turnover on the same attempt to get the ball inside the head key. Roxanne Dankovich calmly and coolly dribbles the ball straight up the floor. Now working a little bit to her left against Lisa Halleck. Good Providence playing man-to-man -man right now. They came out of that trick defense that they used pretty successfully. Keyport for once can take their time, look for a good shot. Dumas is open and Cynthia Dumas scores. Keyport with a three-point lead. Cynthia Dumas now with eight. Little bounce pass underneath and Cynthia made the move. Campana calls a timeout and these fans love it here at the Rutgers Athletic Center. 2.30 to go in the ball game and the Keyport Red Raiders have a three-point lead. And about halfway to go in the third quarter, Eddie, it just appeared that New Providence had this game and were playing at their own pace, doing about what they wanted to do. But up like by say, when they were ready to put them away, it just never occurred. That's right. Uh, all the time, uh, just kind of in a... You just didn't even see it coming. Quietly, they would get back in the ball game. Quietly, they would get back. It would always be down to three or four. And uh, this, all of a sudden here in this last quarter... Uh, They've gone ahead and uh, now they have a three-point lead. I'm surprised that New Providence came out of that uh, defense in which they were playing Colleen Brady. More exciting high school basketball action for the girls. State tournament continuing. Clifford Scott taking on Somerville. A couple of exciting coaches in Tom King and Jerry Moore. Jerry Moore coaches football at Somerville and girls basketball. And Tom King has been just a mainstay in girls basketball in Essex County for many years. The group two final should be excellent. That'll be Wednesday evening, right here on TV3. Jim, you probably don't know this, but in 1972, Tom King succeeded me as the boys' basketball coach at Clifford Scott High School. Tom King, quite an exciting character along the bench for Clifford Scott, and he's had some outstanding teams there. 226, and we have a couple of good teams on the floor right now. Nancy Liss into the lineup for New Providence, and we're going to have a whistle on a foul, reach-in foul. They didn't need that. Uh, she's uh, shaking her head. Uh, she thought she had the ball. They certainly didn't need the foul there. Linda Burke was trying to get in position for a shot, and now she'll go to the free throw line. Third foul called on Roxanne Dankovich. One and one for Burke. And she hits. Both teams shooting very well. Very well from the foul line. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of girls basketball myself this year, but I'm very impressed with the poise. Uh, their ball handling skills and uh, also the way they walk up to that foul line and uh, really shooting the ball well. Girls basketball has come a long way. Burke for the second, and that's good also. 14 points for Linda Burke, who came in just averaging seven a ball game. 50 to 49, Keyport with the slim one-point lead. Now we come down to barn burner time. 2.19 to go. Tony Gata is up telling his team to stretch it out. Everybody take a certain portion on the floor and let's open things up. Just looking up a statistic here, which is amazing. There's only four missed free throws by both teams in this ball game. Pretty good shooting from the foul strike. Dankovich controlling the basketball. She's the player they want to have with the ball. Underneath they have Colleen Brady open for two. Beautiful pass. Beautiful pass and a beautiful move. They found her open. And again, it's a three-point key put. Lead and the pressure is on New Providence. The Pioneers must score here. They're trying to get it to Hedkey and they threw it away. Stolen away that time. Cynthia Dumas with the steal. The Keyport fans are ecstatic here at the Rutgers Athletic Center. And who can blame them? Keyport may try to just put it away in the old refrigerator and let it go in the icebox right now. And you know that with Dankovich and Colleen Brady, those are the two players they want to see controlling the basketball. Both good shooters, both very poised players. Brady almost throws it away, knocked away by Linda Burke, but 
you want your you want your best foul shooters handling the ball right now because somewhere along the line you're going to get hit and have to go to the line we're going to have a timeout here, 103 to go, 52-49. And, uh, Eddie, let's take a look at the way the teams are trying to move the ball right now. Keyboard trying to keep a player open at all times. There's the beautiful pass underneath. They found her alone down there, and uh, Colleen, uh, as I say, they're not playing her as well when they have the player straight on, man-to-man. -man. When they had that little uh, Chinese defense going, and she was being double-teamed all the time, and, and uh, in that box in one, uh, they were contained there. But I can see she's a scorer. She's up around 16 points right now. 14, 16, somewhere in that range, and 18's her average, so, uh, and she's going to have the ball a couple times in this last 103, I'm sure. Eddie, New Providence has been outstanding in the front court. Uh, Higgins, Burke, and Hadke all in double figures. Hadke with 20, but other than that, they really only have five points out of the guards and, and in the, the few players they brought off the bench, and that's a lot of pressure on your front court. Right, and that's, uh, that's where, as we've said many times, where the turnovers are coming. It's uh, trying to get the ball into those front court players, and uh, Keyport is sagging back. Now, uh, big problem here for Keyport right off the bat at a minute three is to get the ball in bounds. And uh, they're definitely probably going to try to get it to Colleen Brady off a little pick here. Or oh, I see uh, the Dumas girls wide open, and that's who they give it to. Hadkey did not come out and pick her up. And he has it on the nose right there. Roxanne Dankovic left side tries to force it down low and turns it over. Definitely a force. That uh, they didn't need to get it in there that time. They had the ball and three points. 52, 53 seconds rather to go in the ball game. And as you see, they'll fall back and force the, the New Providence guards to give the ball to the front court people. And uh, you know that's what New Providence is going to do. Campana tied up goes to Lisa Halleck. Halleck tries to worm away into the lane. The shot is up and no good, but Halleck's right there for the follow. Right, but she'll go to the line for two shots. Two shots. 37 seconds to go. So this time it was one of the guards, Lisa Halleck, who decided to take the ball to the hole. But they're really falling back in. Fouling out of the ball game was Cynthia Dumas. Cynthia fouls out of the ball game. Maxine Whitlock. That just makes Keyport smaller yet. <laughs> Will return, and that's true. Cynthia Dumas leaves at 5'8". Maxine Whitlock just at 5'4". Comes into the ballgame. 37 seconds left. Two shots. First is up and good by Lisa Halleck. And the foul shooting continues to amaze me. Pressure foul shooting. Halleck shoots 64% for the charity stripe. She'll get one more. Boy, that's going to the line and showing me something. She went right up there, hit both of those one and oneers 52-51, 34 seconds to go in the ball game. Whitlock tied up, gets it to Dankovich. Dankovich brings it across midcourt, hounded and fouled by Lisa Halleck. Well, talk about pressure foul shooting. And uh, this is the first girls game I've done all year. We're always talking in the boys game and in high school games. It usually comes down the wire to the foul shooting on the one-on-ones. And here we are. It's down the wire. New Providence made it at the other end. Now Keyport has to do it up here. Roxanne Dankovic shoots 73% during the regular season. And but calmly nets that one. What's she do? Nothing but net. Girls, you're showing me something. Tony Gata has to be very happy. He's clapping his hands right now. His team with a two-point lead. Looking for three. And they have it. He gets them rolled around a little bit. Now all they got to do is let New Providence score, and they can get the ball back and hang on. Campana tied up foul. Gets it to Hadke. Hadke double team back to Campana. Somebody has to shoot. Long jumper is no good. Rebound, though, by Burke. She puts it up off the glass with 15 seconds left. 54-53. They inbound it to Brady. Brady throws it ahead to Maxine Whitlock. And it's a barn burner here. They don't need the shot. Whitlock. All they got to do is put it away right here. And it looks like it. they have. And Keyport has won the championship. Congratulations to Keyport High School. What a basketball game. They are down for over three quarters of the ball game, but they come back in the fourth quarter and some clutch free throw shooting brings away the girls group one championship. Some happy coaches for Keyport right now. Tony Gata, his team has won 40 of 54 ball games, and that is a winning percentage that's going to get even better after today's game. Quite a ball game. Keyport 
just going crazy right now, and they have the majority of the fans here. Bob Conn and his team from New Providence put on a great show here this evening, but Keyport with an outstanding display of poise and an ability to stay in the game just when everybody thought they were going to be out of it. They come away with the title. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with our guest in the postgame show in just a moment, our final score. Keyport wins the Group 1 title 54-53.